Welcome back to another episode of Man vs. Maple, the show where we talk about everything board game related. I am your host, Jeremy Salinas, a.k.a. Dragonstrike, and I'm here with my co-host, Mr. David Waybright. Hello, everyone. You'll notice he's right next to me, which we're about to explain right now, right? Exactly. We have two very special guests with us who just happen to live a couple blocks away from us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is Brady and Adam Sadler. Hey, Hello. You guys have created what? Tell tell our guests what you've created and you why you're here. Uh, you're right. important. We're here to uh, talk about uh, The Walking Dead No Sanctuary, which is up on Kickstarter right now. Um, it's a board game we designed with uh, Cryptozoic Entertainment. And what about your previous designs? Oh, yes. Uh, so you might know me from uh, Descent Journeys in the Dark 2nd Edition, right. which I designed while I was at Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, we also worked on... X-Wing, um, Tannhauser, Mansion of Madness, Gears lots of, of War. Lots of fancy for I didn't know you guys what? did Tannhauser. We just did some content. Man, that's an expansions. old, old game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it was I, old when we were there. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I loved that game. I didn't feel like that game ever got enough support. No, it, it, was, it was actually on the way out when I when I got there, so I got to work on like the last bits of it. Um, yeah, and then since we left FFG, we also uh, designed uh, Warhammer Quest, the adventure card game, uh -huh. which uh, was more of a recent design, and that was our first actual published uh, co-op. Yeah, you know, the first box cover yeah. we shared together. Is that, yeah, cool. So that's the first game you guys worked on together. Yeah, yeah. first in, in an official design capacity. We've done other content for games together, but right. that was our first like core design we gotcha. did together. So, so it's good, good that your name's finally getting splashed around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bringing awesome. some more work to us. So. so this is super exciting. When we found out about The Walking Dead, we're huge Walking Dead fans. Yeah. Um, I haven't missed a single episode. I've read the comics. Uh this is exciting because it's the AMC version, right? Right, yeah, right. So it's a little bit different than what we're seeing in the comic books. Mm -hmm. um, they left on a cliffhanger. Yeah. So <laughs> I know I, I could ask you guys if you know what happens <laughs> next, but I doubt you guys do know. I don't. Uh, I don't my my AMC bets on Glenn. <laughs> yeah. And Bash, right? Um, talk to us about the game. What, what's the game about? Sure. So um, it's a cooperative uh, miniatures board game. Obviously, these are just prototypes, but um, it's a. Uh, survival game first and foremost there are zombies the walkers of course because it's walking dead but the f central focus of the game is not killing zombies or getting kill cam it's more just survival and, and what working makes, together and working together because what makes this unique is um, even though you have these exterior threats out here one of the main threats of the game is the your group morale and how you work together because you do want to work together but just like in the show you have conflicting opinions about what the best move is going to be and that's represented through your that your survivor does and your abilities because you have different approaches you might want to do and when the leader chooses an approach so that's so you have basically one leader yeah yeah does it change just, from yep. around, around yeah so whoever is the leader um, they make the decisions but if they ever suffer too much stress on their sheet at right. the end of the round if they have three stress they're we call stressed they have to pass leader token to the next player and, and, why, and why is that good or bad so, so, having leader, you mean? Yeah. So when you're leader, uh, at the start of the turn, you're going to draw two. You, there's a deck of event cards here. Um, you're going to draw two of those at the start of the turn. The leader is. And right. I, I don't show you guys at all. You guys. And our hands are everything secret. Our hands yeah. are secret. Are you allowed to talk about what you have? You can, you can talk, but you just can't say, hey, I have two, you know, cautious cards such in my hand. Okay. Right. I gotcha. You want to okay. say, guys, we want to be careful here. Okay. I can't be too hasty. Okay, so you can kind of <laughs> vaguely Yeah, yeah. Talk, it's, 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 left, it's, it's left to the opinion of the table, but you just can't show your hands or specifically say what the leader should do. He makes the final decisions. Does that inject a little role playing into it? it it's a little bit social little dynamics bit. because some characters actually have abilities that depend on how the leader chooses. So you might want certain things to happen without telling your group because you'll do something amazing, but it kind of might cost the leader some oh, stress. Cool. So there's a little bit of social There's hardly action. ever a good cho choice yeah. either. Like you're basically just <laughs> saying, it's, it's walking dead. What's, just the like the walking dead. Yeah. what's the least worst thing I can do right now? Which kind of <laughs> captures the theme of the show. Right? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. most people... Uh, if you're not a Walking Dead fan, most people are like, I don't want to watch a show about zombies, and it's not really about zombies. It's no. about humans surviving in an apocalypse and how they interact with each other right. and how they even survive against other humans that right. are still alive. They're and actually a the bigger threat than zombies. Yeah, yeah most of the time. Right. That's right. That was right. one of the, the big uh, foundations of the design was how do we design a zombie game that's not about the zombies. And it, there's, there's been games doing like what, like uh, Dead of Winter is a good example of a game yeah. where yeah. the zombies aren't the central focus but they're they're a definite threat. Well, we wanted to kind of put more focus on the cooperate the cooperative aspect without the traitor mechanics. Okay. So we want to figure out a way to do that. So we, we took those aspects of how do we do a fully cooperative no traitor game where the zombies are a threat 
but they're more of like almost like an environmental hazard where they're just an accepted thing of this world because zombies exist. We can't do anything about it. It's not a surprise anymore, mm-hmm. but we have to live around them and I, figure out how to survive. Again, so. which sounds very much like the show, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, you guys are kind of piggybacking off that idea. Yeah, that because yeah. we're also, we came from the comics, the show, we, we've been huge fans before this ever came to our... Well, it's really cool place, because, so. I mean, over the last several seasons, you've seen where Rick's obviously the natural leader, but then there are times where he goes a little crazy town <laughs> right, and right. someone else has yeah, to step got, up a little he's bit. He's got three stress on his, yeah. on his sheet. I think by season, <laughs> season three, he's like fully stressed. So, so again, let's, let's go back to the leader. Yeah, yeah, the two is, cards you were saying. How, how does that work? All right, so like, like the show, there's a guy, they always look to one person to be the leader. And so this, you know, even if nobody knows what to do, they're going to look to somebody to make a decision. Uh-huh. So he, it's awful. We don't know what to do. Every decision is awful, but someone has to make the decision. So I draw these two event cards, and they're both awful. But as you can see, they're this, they're also colored just like the survivor cards. Oh, okay. And that means those are the different approaches in the game. There's yeah, three there's approaches. There's green for normal, yellow is cautious, and red is reckless. Yep. I see. So yeah, the event cards correspond with your actions. The event cards represent that. I, as a leader, I'm looking at these, and I'm looking at both. There's a the keep event and a, a discard event. So if I whatever card I choose goes into play on the group sheet. And that keep effect goes into play. For example, this one is called Signs of Scavenging. And during this turn, during a survivor, or during an activation, a survivor in a building with the search cards may lose one stress. So, as long as you go to a building with search cards, you can go there and lose a stress. And whoever does that... So they're trying to basically sway the group into doing specific things. Right, like like little tasks. Okay, so what happens if... uh, What's the penalty of being a bad leader? So the penalty is... I pick that, I pick this event. It is, first of all... The one I didn't pick uh-huh. has a discard effect. Each survivor in a building with no search cards suffers stress. Luckily, in this situation, it doesn't good affect leader. anybody. So I, I made a good choice <laughs> I gotcha. out of the bad choices. I see. I gotcha. But now that this is in play, reckless. I'm saying we need to be reckless this turn. Okay. So oh, so that maybe we would, would we want to play then reckless cards? Yes. Uh, so okay. on your on every survivor's activation, the first thing you do is you play a card. And I, since I picked Reckless, I'm going to play Reckless, so I'm compliant. Nothing happens. So if uh, Glenn here goes, and he's like, oh, I want to play a cautious card. Screw you, Rick. I have a better idea. So Rick, is, Rick is like, oh, Glenn did not listen to me. I'm stressing out now. So I suffer stress. However, his card might be very good in this situation. Because he needs to do something specific. Yeah. And it might help the whole group. Uh, but I'm and, stressed out. <laughs> and to mention uh, the, the penalty of stress, I mean, really besides the fact of if you're a leader and you have three stress, you pass it on, another penalty is when you do actions, you always have to roll dice. Right. These are the good action dice. They're called sort of action dice. Uh-huh. These are the stress dice. These have bad results on uh, them. So okay. for every stress you have, you're adding a bad dice to huh. your roll, which is going to okay. either generate cool. more sound so, or... So that, that's a, that, that leads into my next question. Yeah. I, I'm not much of a dice guy. I, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Let me take that back. I love Euro games that have dice mechanics that have mitigation in them. Is there mitigation in this, or is it just a dice fest? Absolutely. That's one thing that we we uh, like as well. We like dice. We love dice, but yeah. we want to have some control over the dice. Right. So in this, there are successes on these action dice, but there's also two other results. There's focus, and there's exert. Um, and focus means if I have a focus token, I can spend it to make that a success. Sounds like some X-Wing going on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we use focus a lot. Yeah. Um, and if I don't use that focus, at the end of my turn, I will get a focus token so I can save something up for later because oh, okay. I didn't do that. Good like prolonged turn. success is essential. Yeah. Now the exert symbol is worse. If I want to make this a success, I have to exert, which means discarding cards. And we should also mention that cards are your health in this game. So... You could discard a card off your deck to make it a success. Fifteen. Everybody has fifteen. There is heal, there is healing. It comes rarely, but you can't heal. Okay. But if you ever have to draw a card, or if, if you have to exert and you can't, you you die. But also the whole team loses. Does everyone have cards. the same number of green, yellow, and yeah, cards? Yeah, same so, allotment. Okay. Just different actions on them. Okay. And and in addition, some cards. For example, if I took the action. On the Kassar, these these survivor cards are multi-purpose. We love multi-purpose cards. So <laughs> but, uh, <Sweet. laughs> You're not alone. I'm a big fan. The, the card you play also gives you another optional action you can do in your turn, in addition to the normal three okay. actions. These, oh. have, these are the normal ones, um, the normal standard actions you can do. And okay. there's an exert symbol. And the exert symbol has an action type associated with it. For example, this is coordinate. So if, if I decided to do a coordinate action this turn, I can use any any exert symbols counts as success because I'm focusing on coordinate that turn. Oh, okay. But the action okay. listed is an interact, so I have to decide which action I want to do on that turn. I gotcha. So the strategic play of what cards you're playing is a big part of how you're mitigating. Yeah, so you're, you're looking at the approach, you're looking at the action, and you're looking at the exert bonus. Cool. Right? 
Interesting. So yeah, that that's another factor where if you have a dead hand where you can't really match the, you can't do what you want to do through your actions, and you might not want to do a standard action. You always have that option to boost one of the standard actions by playing a card that at least give you a little a benefit to your dice rolls, you know. Okay. And the way that actions work, I should mention, is all the actions have a standard effect. Like you do an action, you do what the action says, but the dice rolls come into play because every action has success effects that kind of boost the action. So every little success you get lets you do like a better action. So yeah. it's kind of more of a, a for example, action boost system. We'll do a little example here. If, if Rick does the grapple action, the automatic effect is he can knock someone down for free. It's not a huge eff- effect, but it's you know it's something. You knock him down. Then he rolls his dice. One of the um, the optional effects, if you roll success, is you can defeat a knockdown enemy. So uh, after he's knocked down, I can finish combo. him off. I got Step you. on his head. Cool. I got you. Cool. So. I take it it's scenario driven, right? It is, yeah. The, the scenario sheets will have all the flavor text, the setup. Um, there are some modular aspects that keep a little replayability t- from scenario to scenario because you'll have search cards are randomized because okay. there's types. But like for example, there's equipment types. But you might one time have a bunch of guns, one time you might have a bunch of just bottled water. So you're or something, just learning so. to survive with what you have. Yeah, exactly. Basically. Yeah. Um, how many scenarios in the base set? There's going to be divide? six. There's okay. uh, three what we call non-canon ones that are kind of more training scenarios because there's a lot of concepts to go over, so it goes kind of piece by piece. But then there's three that kind of cover the iconic moments of the first season. Okay. So that's that's the yeah, current. The three tutorial ones that we call, we call them tutorial and development, but each one introduces a new element to the game, like one of them brings in a well, different this, mechanic. This is the scavenger run. This introduces the resources because yeah. the resources give, it benefits your entire group, but um, they also provide negative of effects like a lot of events will say discard a food or something bad happens because group oh, tension so it will always hit group t- it's like you guys have played Robin's Crusoe I have man that game is uh, one of my favorites ridiculously hard <laughs> it's one of my favorites and it's very hard so obviously <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fan of hard co-ops but the uh, the morale track is kind of similar where you have this this morale in your group sheet it's a 10 uh-huh. if it hits zero you lose so a lot of effects if you can't pay the price of an effect you'll do group tension and that means everybody has to discard a trust or you lose morale. So, so losing morale, you die, or just anybody in your group. Right, right? anybody's defeated. Yeah, yeah. Are those the two main... Also, yes. if you ever... Uh, don't, oh, I don't have right. event cards. That's like yeah. the timer, yeah. the event deck. Uh, Which would probably rarely happen with because the, the scenarios are guided. The, the the event decks are built around the scenarios to kind of pace it, so usually... It prevents you from just sitting in a building. Yeah, it'll, it'll for stall. <laughs> <laughs> How long is a game? Um, it's, depending on the scenario you're, t- you're playing, it's it's it's... I'd say roughly about an hour. Hour and a half is a good average. Yeah, hour and a half is probably an average because you might play a scenario. It's an hour. You might play one that might go two hours. There's a lot of choices. I mean, we could play the tutorial in 45 minutes probably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh. Uh, looking at the screen, right? Uh, I can name every single one of these people, and I'm sure you guys could too. This this kind of falls into the Kickstarter. The base set's on the left. Mm-hmm. Who, who do you get with that? So um, the base set's going to have uh, Rick, Glenn, Andrea, and Daryl, as you see splayed out here. Uh-huh. And then um, the. Uh, What's that? What lies? What lies ahead? What lies ahead? I always forget the name of that. Yeah, one. Okay. I love the farm expansion. So I call it the Ot- farm expansion. Yeah. So you got Maggie, Herschel, Beth, and Otis. Otis. Oh, <laughs> nice. For Otis to get nice. So <laughs> random, right? <laughs> I love it. And uh, then we have the prison expansion. Was it the Killer Within? And it's got Carol, Tyrese, Carl, and uh, Carl. <laughs> and <Michonne>. Carl. <laughs> Carl. That's, that's some which is going to have some crazy. There, right? um, it's going to introduce a lot of crazy scenario mechanics because having the prison there is such. An iconic location. So each, oh, yeah. each new one of these add new mechanics. Yeah, yeah so new scenarios okay. and oh. uh, yeah. One of the cool aspects of the scenarios they they use like keyword rules. So this this scenario has has no special rules because it's kind of a learning one. But some scenarios might have the opposition rules mm-hmm. or they call them rivals. Rivalry. Yeah, rivals is the new term. Um, and that introduces a whole new set of mechanics that just goes with that that game component, which is the rival the group. And rival each team. one of these comes with a new type of rival um, yeah. and and a new type of walker. And please tell oh. me that they're all interchangeable. Right? They're all I mean, I'm, I love Glenn. I, I'll probably play Glenn from start <laughs> to finish. Right. So I've, I've never actually right. I'm always <laughs> going to play Otis every game. <laughs> no, but yeah, the, we, we designed a lot of aspects to be modular. There's okay. there are some scenarios that might feature a core uh, survivor, but okay. usually they're included as a supplementary character, so you don't have to play as them. They just have to be present somewhere on the board. Um, so yeah, the, the, char- the survivors are modular. The, there's special walkers, which are also modular. You don't have to play with the same ones all the time, but you can if you want to stick true to the show, you know, because you might might have a scenario that has flaming walkers from the show, but you might want to swap that out for that big well walker in season two. <laughs> the big bloated guy. Yeah, I gotta say, while we have this up here, the artwork is one of the things that I'm completely amazed by. Because a lot of times when you when they, people take a property like this from television, 
you end up with those like screen grabs yeah, from the show. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I, it's it's one of those things that just bugs me. This is fantastic because it looks just like them, but it has this really nice stylized, like almost not cell shaded, but kind of a it's, it's, um, it's a little bit it's got a comic, here, book, comic book yeah, yeah, flavor yeah, over the I was very app. very happy with. And that's I know that, you guys so. can't see this, but on the uh, sheets for all the characters too. And again, I remind you, this is just a prototype. <laughs> The, the artwork is, is the yeah, same yeah. stylized, mm. awesome artwork. It's on the back of the cards. It's in other areas of the game. Yeah, it is. It looks it's spectacular. Fantastic. It looks um, even better in person. Which I've is seen not it, typical. I mean, there's been a lot of the Walking Dead games out there, and none of them have really stuck with me. I mean, there's mm. a mix of AMC ones, but they're dice fests. So yeah, it's not, a comic you know, book. Yeah, it's, mm. they're this not. one's pretty. This one's got me very interested for sure. Yeah, they made it clear when they approached us, um, Cryptozoic, that is, that they were wanting to do a high production, you know, robust design. They wanted design. to take their licensed games to the next level. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, I, I, th- I was really excited about that because I'm I've definitely noticed that as well in the industry where I see a lot of big licenses that are just on these lighter games, mm-hmm. which is great for a mass market and things like that to move a lot of games. But right. I've always wanted to see someone do like like The Walking Dead more of a you know oh yeah a to good like, meaty game yeah, nice. with a, a really hot property wrapped around it yeah. would yeah. be fantastic. You just don't see that often. No. Yeah, we were, we were very excited when they approached us about that and that we jumped cool. right on. <laughs> yeah. Are there secret stretch goals? There oh, are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. there's they, they, they have one. Talk about? They have one reveal. <laughs> Right now, though the one revealed right now is just extra walkers. They have, I mean, there's a slew planned. Can you, um, can you get hint to any of them? Um, <laughs> I don't know if we actually can. Like, right. I don't even know what order they would be coming in. Really? But, well, I, but yeah. you could you could imagine because I've you know I've already made it pretty clear that the game is built to be modular. So even if you don't see your favorite character in one of these boxes, I mean, they might there's, be a there's a lot of, there's a lot you can of characters. Them in anyway. there are, there are. I mean, you got these guys. On, I can see a lot Shane of these here. characters. Will, will we see the governor? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, could you could you leave him out of that? Question? No, no. Is, is he could he be in one of now, these three coming out? Now you, you do see a trend of the uh, the seasons, like they kind of focus on these different seasons, and, and you right. know, governor's kind of far down there, so we'll see yeah, how yeah. far we get. No, yeah, it becomes it. pretty prominent later on. Yeah. Well, guys, this is awesome. Um, I would invite everyone to go check it out on Kickstarter. Uh, Brady, Adam, thank you for coming on set. Yeah, we've, a lot. We've, we've constantly talked about having designers on set. Yeah. We're lucky to have you Very, guys 10 minutes away. Yeah. Um, you can come awesome back anytime you want. Yeah. Just right. worked out. We'll bring every one of our games over here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Make sure uh, you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, like us on Facebook. Um, join us on Twitter. Follow us yeah, on Twitter. Do everything you can. Go check out the Kickstarter if you haven't already, of course. Let us know comments. Uh, you guys can get a hold of Brady and Adam on your own or come through us, and we'll ask them any questions that we may have left out tonight. We understand that this is just kind of a brief overview. Once the game is live and we get a advanced copy of it, we will, <laughs> we will show you guys because we're as excited as you guys. We love The Walking Dead. Uh, I've loved it since season one. I've loved it even before that. So uh, thank you again. Uh, I am Jeremy Salinas. I'm David Waybright. And we'll see you guys again. Thank you. Thank you.